All right, guys. Well, we're going to pray and then get started. So if you want to sit, stand, whatever you want to do, whatever makes you feel comfortable, we're just going to dive in. All right, Jesus, we love you. We thank you so much for this awesome day. We thank you, Lord, that um, you're just so with us and that we can feel your presence anywhere we're at. And we just thank you, Father, that you are meeting us here today. And we're just happy to be here together as a family. Amen. We give honor to your 
the same old road for miles and miles. You've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies. You're still trying to fill the same old holes inside. There's a better life. There's a better life. You got pain.
story isn't over, yeah, the story isn't good. Failure's never final when the father's in the room. Failure's never final when the father's in the room. Your shame at the door Sitting well Making more Ooh, You're in the Father's house Prodigals come home The helpless find hope the Love is on the move When the Father's in the room Prison doors fling wide, the death come to life. Love is on the move when the father's in the room. The miracles take place, the cynical find faith. Love is breaking through when the father's in the room. Jericho walls quaking, strongholds now shaking. Let's break through when the Father's in the room. Let's break
it's overwhelming I want to sit at your feet Drink from the cup in your hand Lay down against you and breathe Feel your heart beat This love is so deep It's more than I can stand I melt in your peace It's overwhelming your feet drink from the cup in your hand lay down against you and breathe feel your heart beat this love is so deep it's more than I can stand I melt in your Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Father, we love you. You're the reason we came, Lord. We love that as we seek you, you bring more and more to us. It's a, it's a lifestyle of getting more and more of you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's just worship him for just a, just a second longer. We're just going to fill the atmosphere in this place. Lord, we love you. Just thank him, thank him. Thank you, Lord. Just thank Him, you know. It doesn't have to be eloquent or anything. Just say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Connect your heart to Him. And we're shifting the atmosphere right now. That's what we're doing. Yeah, Lord. Thank you for your peace. The King of peace. Come on in, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Release your open heaven in this place, Lord. We've heard enough from this world. We came here to hear from you, Lord. We came here to hear from you, Lord. And you, you, you'll use each one of us as your servants, Lord God, even everyone in here, Lord, to help that happen. So we just thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. With our hearts, we thank you, Lord. We thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's it. You feel it shift? I know I'm not the only one. I, I feel it shift. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Lord. We enter his gates with thanksgiving. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's how you do it. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Greg, you want to sing that? time with us. Is that right? I want to sit at your feet, drink from the cup in your hand, lay down against you and breathe, feel your heart beat. This love is so deep, it's more than I
Yeah. I wanted to read Psalm 100. What Josh just did is straight out of the scripture. Shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with singing. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us, and we're his. We're his people, the sheep of his pasture. And here's what we just did. We entered his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name for the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever and his faithfulness continues through all generations. That right there is, uh, that's, that's what King David wrote. And uh, let's pray. Yeah, Lord, we love you this morning. Yeah, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for you know, just the truth that when we praise you and we um, are grateful, we come with grateful hearts and hearts of praise, Lord. It's like the floodgates of heaven open. Your presence just flows in. Thank you for being here with us this morning, Father. This is the Father's house. This is your house, Lord. And um, we're so glad you're here with us. Lord, just move, have your way. We submit this time to you. We honor you this morning, Lord. We thank you for your goodness, for your faithfulness. You're so good. You are so good. You are just so good. Lord, thank you that in your house there's no shame, uh, no condemnation, no guilt. There's just forgiveness and mercy and kindness and faithfulness in your beauty. Lord, we open our hearts to you now. To you alone, Holy Spirit. Just move in a mighty way. You're so gentle this morning, Lord. So peaceful. Thank you for your presence, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We honor you, Jesus. We lift you high, Jesus. We just declare and confess with Peter that you are the Christ. You are the son of the living God. You are God. We worship you this morning. Yeah, we, we adore you, Lord. Give us, give us the grace to adore you. Lord, I ask for more angels that would come, that you would assign here to worship with us this morning, that heaven and earth would join together this morning in this place and worship you as King of kings and Lord of lords. And at the same time, you're our friend. Go figure. <laughs> How does that even happen? I don't know, but we love it. And we love you. Yeah, intensify your presence, Lord. Amen. Sweet spirit this morning. Woo. Yeah. Um, yeah, we got a couple of announcements. And one I want to read, the reason I was grabbing this. Let's see, where, there's Miss Chris. Chris is back there. They're going to have a women's Bible study slash gathering uh, Saturday, August 21st. What's that? Is that two weeks? It's two weeks. Okay. Okay. Um, at nine, from nine to noon here, and it's the watchman, right? And that the the some praying praying folks, and um, yeah, so uh, everyone is invited, and it's people from other churches too are coming, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, if you're if you are a prayer and you're an intercessor, or you just want to hang out with some super cool anointed women. Come Saturday morning, the 21st at 9 o'clock, right here. Okay, cool. Um, wanted to uh, highlight uh, what we've got coming up. We're going to kick off Sunday schools here at Blue Jean. Yeah, woo, 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 woo. It's going to be fun. Yeah, a lot, lot be, is being planned for a good kickoff. That's going to start the 20, what, second? Two weeks. Uh-huh. And we've got stuff for everybody, uh, youth and children and uh, we've been working on it, so uh, y'all make plans for plugging into a small group. It's the best place, to, way to grow ever. 
All right, and then uh, let's see. I want to give one little blip about last Wednesday night. Y'all, it was epic. <laughs> it really was. There, there was so much love in the room uh, Wednesday night with the Grow Blue Jean meeting. What did we have? 30 or 40 people total with the servers and everybody down there. And Mary and Josh and uh, let's see, is Betty, Miss Betty here? Uh, anyway, uh, Debbie, Debbie, uh, and um, anybody else? Who? Amy, Miss Amy. Uh, spent so much time decorating tables and doing flowers. And oh my gosh, it's just like what love looks like. Great turnout, great stuff. Um, told stories about Blue Jean and so we would know who we are and then I think this coming week that same group will dive into our giftings and identifying giftings and then I think the finish is to kind of plug people in or give people opportunities where to plug in. The idea is, it comes out of a, the idea that we want people to feel like they're part of a family. They don't just attend that if they want to be a part and they want a, play, a part to play, there'll be opportunities that match up with your gifting. So it's like fun. It's not like I got to, it's like I get to. And that's the whole point with joy and, and excitement. So uh, awesome job. There'll be more. If you missed the first round, don't worry. There'll be another round. But if it's anything like last Wednesday night, you don't want to miss it. It was really sweet. Um, uh, yeah. And let's see, is there anything else? All right, y'all, Josh has got it this morning, and I uh, know he's got a great message, and uh, we'll tee up uh, the song that we got after y'all do communion, right? Uh, the king is here. Uh, some of the praying women in the church really got a word and felt like that was something we were supposed to sing this Sunday. So uh, I don't know what's going to happen when we do that, but it's going to get crunk. Anyway, y'all give it up for Joshy. Josh, we love you. All right, um, I'm gonna do a little demonstration just to kind of start us off. I'm not gonna sing a song. <clears throat> so, really excited. Got a great word. Uh, I'm gonna be all over the place. Saint Nick, sorry, buddy. <laughs> um, he's gonna do a great job. Y'all give it up for Nick. Thanks, buddy. I even gave him the look whenever my mic wasn't working earlier. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> and it was me. I, I hadn't turned it on. You know, so <laughs> that's what he, he has to deal with that. Sound guys don't get any credit. Um, he's doing such a great job. You know, he, it's not like he knew how to do that. He learned. Yeah, patiently. So, all right. So, cool. I'm going to talk about worship today, and I wanted to start off with a little demonstration I saw Ray Hughes do, and it was really, it just has changed my life. Um, he's a speaker, if you're familiar with him. And um, the thing that I, we'll get more into why I'm giving this demonstration, but I'm, um, I just want to show you real simply that sound is physical. It's, it is physical. And so you can, you can kind of hear it. So you hear those, uh, you can kind of hear it in my mic. So if I, if I bring them out of tune, you can kind of hear it, right? But you can hear them if you're careful. Listen carefully, you'll hear them come back into tune. You hear it right there? And so what's happening is there's little waves, right? Stuff, you can, we can't see it. It's like radios, you think all that kind of stuff. I promise this won't be so weird. I'm just, uh, just wanting you to see something real quick before we move on. And um, so these waves are going like this, right? And if they're not together, then you can hear it and it feels something. You can feel a little bit like ooh, some tension or something. But when they're together, they're doing this, right? And they're together. So we feel that connection. So that's important. Because I want you guys to understand that when we're worshiping, it's not just um, about music. If we're all singing the same song, there's something even greater going on. Pretty exciting, isn't it? I mean, there's something moving through us. 
that sound is, is coming through us. And uh, when we do it in unison and in agreement, then we get to kind of, you know, participate with it, not just in our heads, but in our hearts and in our soul and everything else. So it's just exciting. So um, we'll get back to it. I love worship. Um, and when I asked the Lord what I was, what I was going to speak about today, uh, you know, he said, talk about worship. And uh, I was like, oh, awesome. Uh, you know, give me a word. <laughs> and he did. He's faithful. Um, and uh, I'd never heard this word before, so I was like, this is cool. Uh, hold on a second. This is, give me a new message. All right, here we go. All right, so um, this is the why and the what of worship. I think it's interesting, you know, people, uh, you know, we could talk about what worship is. We are worshipers. Let's start there. I got so many places I could start. Sorry. But um, we are made to worship. God made us, right? So he put us together. He knitted us together. He thought about it, and we were made to worship. And whether we worship him or something else, we're doing it every single day. And so, don't worry, I'm not going to throw the football under the, <laughs> worship here like you do, you know, that, that one's been hit too many times, I won't do that to you, you know, but, you know, the reason that people get excited at football games is because they really understand what's going on, they got a clue on what's going on, they're in the, the drama, the players, and all kinds of stuff, and they see something happen out there, and they get excited about it, you know, um, it's pretty much, that is worship. That's a good picture of what worship is. Worship is uh, knowing what's, what's going on. You're connecting to what is happening. And uh, in that connection, you're taking part with, uh, with heaven on the earth. Heaven is worshiping Jesus just like you. So there's this awesome thing that we've been invited into that's really, really cool. I mean, it's not of this world, guys. Um, I mean, it is what heaven does. Those angels up there, their glory, glory, glory. You think we repeat choruses a lot. Over <laughs> forever. I mean, eternity. They're just, they're repeating. I'm being funny, but I mean, it, it is. It's, it's pretty cool. Like, they're, they're up there, holy, holy, holy. Glory, glory, glory. Um, every time they look at God, they see another aspect of him that bursts them into exuberant praise for who, they, for who he is. Wow. Holy, holy, you're holy. You know, and then they're always caught off guard. You, you think about that expression, if it's genuine and it comes from your heart, you know, it's not like a, you know, it's not a statement, it's not a definitive thing, it's, a, it's an experience. Holy, you're holy. So when we, when we take part in worship with these angels, and see, this is the thing you got to know about God, He is so faithful he is absolutely uh, intentional every single second of the day. And this is just stuff from the Scriptures. And if we went into the Scriptures, it would take too long. I've got a lot of Scripture I want to read with you guys. Um, but, uh, but you can look into it for sure. Uh, I would definitely encourage you. The Bible's wonderful. But God's intentionality, He's intentional about who He puts in places, right? Romans 12 talks about that. Says he, he decides who's gonna, what he's going to do with who. He, he's got a plan and a purpose, a destiny for you. So he decided. He made an, a, a decision about you and what you would do with your life before you got here. And we're like, well, I messed it all up. No chance you can do that. He's God. So, I mean, you know, you can, you can get off track and all that kind of stuff. You can not participate. But will God get his stuff done? He's going to get it done, whether you participate or not. You get an opportun opportunity. You're invited. Totally different than the way a lot of people look at it. They feel like, well, if I don't do it, then I'm going to hell, so I better, I better play, the ball and play the game or something like that. You know, they get out a hell free card, you know. That's not what it's about. It's an invitation into, the, into participating with heaven. And that's why I showed you that little thing with, with sound, right? If we know it's physical, can you, I mean, does it blow your mind like it does me? Like, when we start to sing these songs that God intentionally put in the hearts of worship leaders, he did it on purpose. He put the words in their heart, and they began to write it out. That doesn't mean it's the same as the Bible. You guys stay with me, okay? So it just means that God is 
he's he's there's a holy there, you know, a holy, you know, like there's a there's a moment there. There's something that these guys are tuning into as we tune into them. We're, we're participating with heaven on the earth in a fallen world. We're participating. It's awesome, isn't it? What an invitation. I mean, what, what a wonderful opportunity we have, you know? We don't have to wait for dying, the by and by, and all that, all that stuff that we've heard a lot. Uh, it doesn't mean everybody's lost. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that there's an awesome opportunity for us to participate with heaven in this life. That's so cool. You know, I've said this before. God doesn't like that it's a fallen world. He didn't like it. So what did he do? He sent his son, Jesus Christ. He made it. He had a plan. He said before, you know, Christ was slain before the foundations of the earth. Like he had a plan. He decided that he would, that Jesus Christ would be slain so that there would be that opportunity for the fallen world, the one that we experience, the one that's unfair, the one that, that uh, invites us to be addicted, um, you know, busted and disgusted. That fallen world is not something that he wanted it to be, so he did something about it. He sent Jesus Christ, right? And in, I mean, and he said it's done. What was done? What was finished was what he gave to us. He successfully gave something to us, completed his work to give it to us. So in this life, you know, we get the opportunity to participate with heaven in this life. And, and what are we doing? So if we pray for healing or we pray for someone, then we're interrupting the flow of this world. And, it, and there's some tension there, right? When you go and you pray for somebody, there's a little bit like, oh, I don't know if I want to do that. You know, maybe I'll get embarrassed or something. And you can feel that tension, Right? So you're a little out of tune with what, you know, with, are they out of tune or something's out of tune. It's a little, little out. But then you, you face your fears, you risk it, <laughs> you go for it, and you pray for your coworker or whatever it is, and you feel heaven. It's incredible. You're like, why didn't I do that sooner? I can't believe I took so long and wasn't wanting to risk this. This is amazing. This is so much fun. Um, man, you see somebody get healed in front of you, you just, you can feel heaven erupting with praise. Like, it's just wild. Your love is wild. Love is wild for me. Come on. All right. I got to get into this. Um, you guys following me? We have an awesome opportunity. And that's the gospel, right? So the gospel, God spoke, right? He spoke. It's a big deal. He spoke. And then everything was created. Sound brought everything together. Scientists know it. Church should know it too. Sound had something to do with creation. So, you know, it is important for you to understand what you put in your ear gate and your eye gate and all that kind of stuff. It's coming into you. It's becoming a part of you. You are what you eat. You are what you listen to. It's all true. It's, it is. It becomes a part of you. You've made a decision and so what are we doing when we put ourselves in, in a constant barrage of praise and worship music or something like that? We're tuning in to heaven on the earth. What an opportunity. Wow. And like I said, you're going to worship whether you worship God or not because that's who you are. You were created to do it. Um, and you're really good at it. Let me encourage you. You're really good at it. It doesn't matter how you've experienced it you were made to do it. There's no one better. The angels aren't better at it than you. We have this opportunity to be absolutely, profoundly like in tune with what God is doing. And every time we choose, make that choice, just like that, in a second, we become who we, be, we were created to be. Our identity is solidified into the natural world, into the fallen world. And, you know... Devil, get over it. Who cares? You know, you don't get a chance. You don't get a say in this. So. It's cool. Because he wants it to keep going the other way, you know. He wants you to keep messing up. He wants all that stuff. He wants you to not be strong enough to not have soundness in your being. He wants you to be unsound, shaky, 
not not being able to figure out, you know, like if if what what good, what is a good decision? What is a you, you can't do any of that stuff because you're unsound, you're timid, you know, you're pulling back constantly and all that kind of stuff because that is exactly what the devil would love for you to do. Why? Because that's his plight. That's what he's experiencing. He's the he's the ultimate. Spiritual orphan. I want to emphasize spiritual orphan. A lot of people forget to do that. No offense to anyone. Um, but we, he is a spiritual orphan. The devil, right? So when he wants us to be unsound, why? It's because he's unsound. He's shaky. He doesn't have a, a grounding on, for his feet. He doesn't know what his future He doesn't have a future. He's the one that's busted, disgusted, depressed. He's the one that needs counseling. He's the one that's addicted. I mean, he is a mess. And the, and the Bible says that when we see him, we'll be so shocked at how insignificant and small he is. Might as well decide that we can see that now. And how are we going to do that? Because we're going to understand that our identity with God is super safe and super sound. And every time we look to him, we are connecting with who he has created us to be. We're free to be who he created us to be. Isn't that exciting? Somebody getting excited in here? Is it just me? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Sometimes smiling is a prophetic act. Just, there you, go. there you go, I see you. Come on, you can feel it when you do it sometimes. It's awesome. Y'all are awesome. I love this church. I'm so excited to be here. You know, my journey with worship, I would get into it, but oh my goodness, we'd be here all day. Like, I did not learn how to worship when I first became a Christian, guys. You know, I, I wasn't born with this. I figured it out over time, and I'm not saying I, did, I figured it all out. Oh my goodness, there's so much more to learn all the time, and, the, and that's good because it's alive, right? It's not a dead thing that I came into understanding and then it never moved away. No, it's constantly moving. It's living. It's breathing. It's teaching me. It's, uh, you know, I'm not just reading the Bible. It's reading me, you know. I mean, it's changing me every time. And I'm, you know, I'm like looking at it and it's like, you know, it's alive. It's breathing. It has life. It's, It's relevant to the day that I'm in. Amen. All right. All right. So this is the why and what we worship, right? We worship God. He's awesome. He's complete. He's sound. He's not insecure. He didn't fall off his throne when something bad happened to you. Uh, he didn't, he did not, he felt it when that happened. He connected to you and, uh, you know, and he didn't like it, right? Because it's a fallen world, something that he did not agree with. He didn't want that to happen. It's not it. God is good. And, you know, there is a moral, a moral aspect to the Bible that is really important, right? I won't overlook it. It's important. Moral, like the moralness of God is who he is. He's good. And he wants us to be like him. How does he do it? He provides for us. So I wanted to get into some people that are worshiping in the Bible. Man, there's so many great places uh, to look. And I said, well, Lord, you want me to talk about David's tabernacle? I mean, if you've you ever gotten into that, oh, my gosh, it's so exciting to read about. It's just powerful. God, I mean, David, whoa, man, his heart was so much for worship. And he just put people on it 24 hours a day. And they were, I mean, they were going for it. It wasn't a small worship. They were like, they were living their lives to worship God. And they had all kinds of different levels of worship, you know, praise, prostrate on the floor, you know, like all that kind of stuff. I mean, these guys would totally get way beyond their own embarrassment and uh, get into some worship. Um, yeah, okay. So I'm going to Luke 1, and I'm going to read from a translation that I absolutely adore. It's a modern translation, so you guys won't be able to find it, but you're welcome to look on from your own favorite translation. I don't want to, you know... You should be able to follow it to some extent, but you're going to notice some things are different. So this is called the Mira Bible. Uh, Francois de Toy, he's alive today, and he's, uh, he, you know, he's a MDiv. You know, uh, he's a theologian. He's uh, and uh, an etymologist. He he loves the word. I mean, one thing that he pointed out that I thought was really helpful, or someone pointed out, but uh, Hebrew is tri- uh, triliteral. I'm not just trying to. Imp- 
impress anyone. I'm just saying it's try little. That means it has three meanings for every single word you come across in the Hebrew. So context, context is everything as you read from that, that level, you know? Because how confused can you be, man? It's like, see, in, in English, it's uniliteral. Like, so pretty much every word that we have in the English language has just got one uh, meaning. It's, it's kind of just linear. Um, so interesting stuff, you know, when, when it gets into the, to translations. One of the things that's, that's been really helpful for me is uh, learning a, a lot about translation. So I recommend it. Get in there. Understand it. Uh, the King James is going to surprise you. There's a lot of story back there. I'm telling you. Get in there. Learn about the history of the King James. Um, uh, William Tyndall. So I'm getting distracted, but you guys look into these people. They're so profound. William Tyndall translated the translation that ended up as the King James Bible. He was, uh, man, he was so in love with God. He didn't care if people, you know, were going to kill him, and he got so many death threats, and God delivered him over and over again. There's so much wonderful story about William Tyndall that you should know. Uh, The King James, I love the King James. Um, Anyway, okay, so... Just to give you a reasoning why I would just read a, a translation that wasn't the living translation or something else. I love all those translations. They're all good. This one's really good, too. So, yeah. All right, so I'm going to read. All right, from Luke 1. There has been several attempts. I'm going to read with an accent. <laughs> there has been several attempts to give an accurate account of the extent of that which has been fully accomplished within us. I don't know why I'm reading with that accent, but, you know, it helps me pay attention, so maybe I'll share it with you guys. Is that okay? Exactly as it has been handed down to us by those who were eyewitnesses since the beginning and therefore under rowers and pioneers in carrying the precious cargo of the word. Some of you, I can feel it. You're kind of mind blown. Hey, listen, when I read the Bible, I get into it. I mean, it's total theater. Whatever I can do to make it come alive, um, I want to participate. So I, too, determined to acquaint myself thoroughly with the utmost attention to detail, scrutinizing the unfolding of everything with fresh insight from a heavenly perspective. And thus, I produced this written record with you in mind. Most honorable friend of God. Now, a lot of translations use Theophilus. And Theophilus could be a person, but the word Theophilus actually means friend of God. And it's more likely, and uh, you know, it's possible at least, that he is saying friend of God. He's inviting all of us to come and take part. And Luke was a doctor. Um, Awesome. Anyway, okay, so I'll just keep going. My prayer is that this word will be a heavenly download into your spirit so that you may know beyond a shadow of doubt the absolute certainty of these things that you were taught. The following event occurred during the reign of Herod over Judea. There was a priest, Zechariah, of the Abiha division. Abiha means uh, Yahweh is my father. Abba, a Beehive division whose turn it was to do the daily temple service. He was married to Elizabeth, a descendant of Aaron. They were both living exemplary and righteous lives before God. Since Elizabeth was barren, they, they could not have children and were now already advanced in years. You've heard this story before. It so happened that while his division of priests were on temple duty before God, he was allotted with the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity of a priest to prepare and present the perfume on the altar of incense before the veil of the most holy inner sanctuary. So picture it. He's a priest of like 28 different tribes, right? And... He gets this opportunity that he wasn't even sure would ever come to him. He's a Levite. And, um, and here it is. It's his opportunity. He's going to go live in Jerusalem for two weeks. They set him up in a kind of hotel situation or something like that. He's got, um, and he gets this awesome opportunity. And he's, you know, but think of it, 400 years have gone by and nobody's had an experience with God. Crazy. 
During the hour of incense, the people of Israel would be in solemn prayer outside, suddenly to the right of the altar of incense, in front of the veil between the holy and most holy place, a messenger of the Lord appeared to him. The messenger standing before him said, Jah is mindful, and that means God is mindful, which is actually what Zechariah's name means. God is mindful. So a lot of translations will say Zechariah, Zechariah. But it uh, says it's likely that this angel was saying, hey, listen, something really nice, you know, something you know about God because it's been repeated to you your entire life. God is mindful because that's your name, Zechariah. That's the first thing the angel says to him, something familiar, something that mattered to him. Zechariah, you have no reason to fear. This is the moment for your dream to realize. Elizabeth shall bear you a son, and you shall name him John. And there will be a feast, I'm sorry, there will be a festivity of delight with much leaping and dancing as multitudes rejoice at his birth. This is going to be fun, right? <laughs> it's going to be something, right? So his stature of greatness will be in a life of face-to-face encounter in the presence of the Lord. His jubilant intoxication will not be by wine or strong drink, but by the indwelling Holy Spirit, even in his mother's womb. So this is the baby that Elizabeth is going to be pregnant with, right? And he will turn the mass of the sons of Israel to the Lord their God. In the same prophetic spirit and power of Elijah, he will go before the face of the one he's about to introduce and turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. Remember that from the Old Testament. And will convert their unbelief into a seeing for themselves by bringing them to an unveiled understanding of righteousness. So Old Testament is the conviction of sin. This is important. New Testament, this is crazy is the conviction of God's righteousness. What? That's when we we can look inside and we can see God. Now, I, I, I get it. It's intimidating to think about these things, but this is what Jesus paid for. He paid so that God's righteousness would be inside of you. This is why we worship, guys. Because we, this is stuff that's like mysterious and it's beyond our grasp sometimes. But the, the truth of the matter is that he's in us. What he did, he did, right? That was the good news. I mean, man, that's, that's, there's some good news. Thus preparing people's minds for a seamless transition to everything that the prophets pointed to, which is now accomplished in the Lord in the face-to-face encounter. The meticulous, detailed engineering of mankind's salvation is about to be fully realized. Intentionality, God's intentionality is about to be fully realized. Like we're going to be able to understand it. We're going to be able to carry it. We're going to be able to come into an understanding of it. Sorry if I distracted you with my my technique. <laughs> That's just something I love to do. I hope it's okay. I really just wanted to share it with you guys, but because Bob makes me feel great about it. He's like, this is awesome. <laughs> I'm like, Bob, I shouldn't have done that, man. Totally distracted everybody from my message. No, I'm just joking. It's not Bob's fault. Um, oh, I love the gospel. So God spoke, right? And then he empowered and inspired prophets from the beginning, right? The whole gospel is from the beginning of the Bible to the end of the Bible. He empowered people, his people, to speak of the things that, that were in God's heart. And every prophet before the New Testament, every time they worshiped, unlike us, I'm telling you, and this is the distinction that I'm getting to, when they worshiped, they would talk about what would come. They'd be like, I see this. It's going to... There's going to be hope. There's going to be a, a, a new beginning. There's going to be possibilities that aren't currently here. It's going to get better. That's what those prophets were saying. Because God is going to rule, and things aren't going to be like this anymore. Every single one of them. And some of them, David and a few others, man, they, they, I mean, they, 
honed in so closely to, I mean, uh, to the point of like, you know, what town and, you know, every, every little detail about Jesus's life, so many that it's, uh, you know, I mean, even scientists or researchers or whatever, there's one guy I'm thinking of, he put together all the numbers and stuff, and it's just wild, um, wildly impossible for him to fulfill that many things, right? So that was what prophecy was about in the Old Testament. It was about worship. It was connecting to God and him inspiring these, these believers that there would be hope someday. And they were coming into contact with that. Right? New Testament comes, and man, I really wanted to read through all of this, but I won't do that to you because that's, uh, it's just going to take too long. Um, New Testament in a lot, a lot of ways, it begins with Zechariah right here. Like he's, he's uh, you know, I mean, there's other things that it begins with too, but um, Zechariah begins to have this life that is, it's been 400 years since anyone has experienced it, right? And that is this life that is filled with like angelic visitations and like the reality of God coming into him, right? There you go. <laughs> so cool. I lose track. Uh, hope someone is properly embarrassed over that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. No, I'm just joking. No, I was reading the scripture. Oh, oh there we go. <laughs> what? Um. So there's a new experience, um, and, and all these angels start showing up, and all this thing. They, they show up to the shepherds. They show up to Simeon. You guys probably don't remember Simeon, if, unless it's Christmas time. We don't talk about him much. He had an experience with an angel, and uh, basically it told him that, you know, don't die until you see the Messiah. I, I'll promise you that you'll see him before, before, you, before you die. And so he stayed alive. He was like 90-something years old, and he, and he meets Jesus, and he talks to Mary about it. Mary also had an encounter. Um, and they're all experiencing, and Simeon, there's Anna too. Sorry, I'll just point out a few people. They're all experiencing this completely different reality than uh, because of the, the goodness of God and his deliverance. It wasn't what they expected. They expected, and it's important to understand this, so they expected Jesus to come, or the Messiah to come, and he would just kill all the Romans, right? That made sense. Just come in and kill these Romans off, and then we'll be okay. It's not exactly what happened. What Jesus did was he came, and it was shocking to them, I'm sure, they, that he died on the cross. That part was very strange. So for, um, they wouldn't have expected that. But he rose again, and that was his, his plan to empower us with his life, right? It's a, we're a new creation. We've been made new. There's never been anything like you on the planet. And so Mary really embodies the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament. And don't worry, I'm not going to get Catholic on you. Catholics kind of overemphasize Mary to make her a god. She's not a god. But what she is, what is important for every Christian believer, and we can't underemphasize her, is she was the first Christian. She was the first one that believed in Jesus and had that experience with him, giving birth to him. She conceived Jesus Christ. Everyone before her, every prophet that ever lived before Mary, perceived Jesus at best. Not crazy? That's a total upgrade. And that is what we're invited into doing. It's conceiving Jesus. That doesn't mean you're going to give birth to a new Savior or something like that, but it does mean that you'll give birth to hope. It does mean that you'll give birth to life in a dying world. It does mean that you'll have solutions when no one else does. And you're in a business meeting, and everybody's stressed out about some, some bill that can't be paid or whatever, and you're the one that's sitting there with peace. 
It's supernatural. You're from another world. You're a new creation. Absolutely never, never been on the earth before. And Mary showed us something there. You know what I mean? So it's important for us not to underemphasize what she did do. She held things in her heart. She obsessed about them. She was just like, man, this angel came and spoke to me, and it was, it was pure of, it was full of hope. And I mean, everything we've known from forever was just this sin consciousness. Just constantly thinking that I needed a better self-help program. That was, that was the only thing we've ever heard. And this angel came into my life and said, no. And he said, you know what? God's going to make it right. You're not going to make it right. You're not going to fix yourself. God's going to fix it. And he's going to give life in a, in a baby, in her case, that will bring hope for the whole world. And that's what he's done to each one of us. Each one of us have having, had encounters. It just depends on, you know, it's a weird word. I wrote a book about it on, on purpose um, because I, I just, I felt like, man, people think this word is so strange and it's spooky and stuff like that. And it's, if we're not having encounters with God, then we're missing it like crazy. We are missing it. Encounters are just moments. This is the way I defined it. You know, somebody else might take it another direction which is okay, I'm not against that. Uh, But there are moments where we know God is real. Moments. Moments when we knew God was real. It's just no chance that I missed that car accident without God getting involved. That car would have went right through me. Some of y'all have had that experience. I know I have. Several times God saved me, and I was like, I almost died there. There were so many times I almost died. I even overdosed on, on drugs one time. And that was a crazy experience that I won't get into, but... Um, just in case anybody thought I was perfect up here talking about Jesus is perfect though that's what I can tell people that's what I can release that's full of hope for every imperfect person for every uh, what do they call it ragamuffin every ragamuffin that exists Mary said she was a ragamuffin isn't that crazy she thought so little of herself. I don't know. I mean, I think too highly of her sometimes, maybe, or something. You know what I mean? Because it's just Jesus. Jesus is the perfect. He's the one that is perfect for every last one of us. And guess what? If you're releasing the perfection of God into this, this life, then you're doing a great job. Good job on you. Pat yourself on the back. This is amazing. You're, you're absolutely raging against the machine that is the devil's work on this planet. And you're doing a great job. And, I mean, without that level of encouragement, without that foundation of understanding, it's hard to know that we're going in the right direction. But what if you did know? What if you did know that you just having a smile could mean that you're releasing heaven into a situation? You walk into a room, it's all tense and stuff like that, and you're like, I'm just not going to flow with this. I know who's on the throne. My God is able to save. He saved me. He can save this person. Colin, man, you, you, you so inspire me the way you believe about people, man. Just nobody, nobody's out, outside of the reach of God. Um, and there's so many people in here that do. Bob's, oh my gosh, man, you're just this giant of the faith when it comes to ragamuffins. Me included, man. I mean, he saw something in me. I've never even felt... Like, I could lead the way that Bob has allowed me to, just being under his, his leadership. And he's constantly telling me, you know, like, you got leadership all over you. And I get this opportunity, him releasing that heavenly hope that he has, I get this opportunity to believe what he's saying. Wow, it's that simple. So sometimes we preach the gospel with words, St. Augustine said. Sometimes. We preach the gospel no matter what. If we're believing, and I'm not trying to get it, you know, I mean, if somebody needs to hear the word, you should, you, we should each have that in our heart so much. We should treasure it in our heart what Jesus did, what he accomplished. He, he brought hope into an absolutely hopeless world. So when you see hopelessness, you know that that's not his design. And you can release it. You can say, you know what? You don't have any hope for yourself, but I got hope for you. You know? And his goodness, 
When we look at his goodness, it inspires us to be good. Not because we can. You know, it says that before Jesus, that everything in our heart was evil. Every single idea in our heart. But because we have this this connection with a real God, we can look at Him. And I'm telling you, when you look on the, on the face of God, and, you know, that's a concept. I mean, sometimes people see Him, you know, but it is important that you die to self so that you can live as Christ, right? That's the exciting opportunity you have, not to live the circular life of unsounded Shaky, unable to make decisions, unable to feel good about what you're doing in life, unable to, you know, just be free at all. You being free in front of someone else can preach the gospel more than a lot of messages can do sometimes. You guys understand what I'm talking about? So cool. Your freedom is important. You not being caught up in a tangly web of what the devil's created in the fallen world and all that kind of stuff is important to God because you can because we're like mirrors on the earth. We're just like we're looking up at him in worship and he's looking back at us and he's and as we look, we get caught off guard. It's like holy wow. I never would have thought you were that good. Holy. Wow. You are so amazing. How do you love me like that? How can you do that? No way. No, I did something earlier today that you shouldn't love me like that. You love me like that? Okay, all right, I'm going to go love somebody because that's amazing, you know. And that's where we get it from. Encounters, spooky word, is is important for us to understand like we need to have moments with God and that is what the church is trying to provide we're trying to give you an opportunity Sunday mornings at least you know to come into that opportunity when Rick's up here doing worship or whoever and you have a moment to to raise your hands completely focus on him and take everything else out and and do it together with everybody else Okay, real quick. So worship is this opportunity to really kind of get to experience God. One time, I'm uh, I've talked to you about my my uh, my uh, I had a what do you call those war rooms? I had a, like a war room, <laughs> as some people have called it, and um, it was a closet in three a.m. Um, you know, 3 a.m. on the dot, the Lord was really faithful about that. He'd wake me up, and he'd say, um, you know, Josh, get in there. We're going we're gonna to do something, and or whatever. He wouldn't, you know, sometimes he would say stuff. Sometimes he would ju- I would just know, oh, 3 a.m., you want me to go pray? Okay, so I'll go, and I'll get in my war room. It was just a closet, a real long closet. And one time, the Lord's like, hey, Josh, I need you to, and I thought it was hilarious. He said, Josh, you know uh, your body isn't just for head transportation. It's not just there. I didn't create it just so that you can move your head around places, you know. <laughs> I was like, and I, man, I, I just, I was like, man, that is the funniest thing I've ever heard. And honestly, I'd heard someone else say it before, so it's out there. They're, I'm quoting somebody. I don't even know who they are, but God quoted it to me that morning, and he said, Josh, it's not, it's not uh, just for head transportation. And so he was asking me to do something that I was super uncomfortable with. I told you I had to learn how to worship, right? And um, so he's like, he's like, just turn on a YouTube video. And, uh, and so I turned it on. I do what I usually do when I worship. I was just like, this, and this is, this is the thing right here. You know, I learned how to do that, you know. Somebody taught me how to do that. And um, he's like, well, you want to raise your hand or something? He's like <laughs> walking me through it, you know. Hey, God is real. He speaks to Christians, all right? Like literally, if you, if you know the Lord, then, you know, you get to hear his voice. That's one of the benefits of being 
saved. <laughs> so anyway, so he's speaking to me. It's 3 a.m. I'm not thinking anything. It's just the Lord talking to me. I'm serious. So uh, he's like, you want to raise your hand? I was like, okay. <laughs> you know, I'm still just listening to the YouTube video. And um, he's like, well, you know, and, you know, and I, I did. I, I felt a connection when I did that. And I was like, um, there's something in that. And just slowly he kind of, he took me into two hands and um, all that. And then he said, well, why don't you, you know, and I remember this Lou Engel guy, and he would always rock back and forth or whatever. And, um, and so the Lord was like, why don't you try that? <laughs> he reminded me of him. And um, so I'm rocking back and forth. And, um, and, he, and then he said this to me, and I, oh, man. It, I mean, it, like, I started crying. It was so powerful. But he's like, Josh, you look like a flame. You're like a flame. And I was like, oh, that's cool. That's cool. And I could feel it. I could feel it like my body being like a flame, you know. And, um, you know, and that's, that's imagery of the Holy Spirit and all this kind of stuff. It's flooded me. I'm like, that's so cool. And then uh, he's like, why don't you move one of your legs? <laughs> you know? And I'm like, okay, all right, sure. Let me see if I can do this, you know. And, um, and I, you know, and then I pick up the other one. And I'm like kind of fumbling around because I don't know how to dance. Oh, my goodness. You know, my wife's a dancer. I don't know why, you know, people who are dancers end up with guys like me. But, you know, but anyway, so I'm like, you know, doing all this stuff and just trying to move, move around and stuff like that. And, and I started to feel the Lord in my fingers, in my toes, in my, in my legs, in, in my chest, and not just in my head. He was inhabiting my praise, my, my body, everything was, was his, and he was using it, <laughs> and it was so cool, and I wasn't, and you know, and I just, I don't know what I'm doing with my hands or anything like that, I was just trying to do something, because it was, it was just something, and I could feel it, I could feel him moving through me, and I realized, you know, that, you know, my fingers and my toes, they were worshiping God, so it's not just my head, Right? It was my heart, my whole heart, my whole body was like just, and I was like, oh, I can't go back from here. I'm just going to be that weird guy that's jumping around and stuff, and like, this is so cool, <laughs> you know, and I, and I mean, it was so exuberating, like, just like, ah, wow, God, this is so cool, and I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a total introvert, and even for me to do that in front of you guys, or the accent, is just me trying to invite you into my worship experiences, which can be completely different than yours, but, you know, what I do want to encourage you to do is maybe you don't know everything about it. Maybe you can take it a little further. Maybe you can be a little freer. Try it. Seriously, like we're going to listen to this wonderful song. What a great idea. King is here because he is. He's in each and every last one of us. And as we, <laughs> I know some of you guys are feeling anxiety right now, but I, I just, just start with the flame. Just start with the flame. I want you to experience it, you know? Have an encounter with God right here today. Experience. He'll, he'll let you know your, your soul will give witness to the goodness of God. If it's not him or if he's up to something else with you, that's okay. He created every last one of us different. But give it a shot and just feel. Feel the music. Let it run through you. Believe that God is good enough to create the songs that needed to be for this time so that you could move in and in, in experience worship with them, with, with heaven. You can participate with heaven. And just start with the flame. And then when God says, hey, move your, move your leg <laughs> or whatever, just do it. And, uh, you know, forget the pews. Get out in the, the aisles and stuff like that. Come up here in, the, in this area and all that good stuff, you know, and worship God. And don't just do it up here is what I'm trying to get you to. I want you to get down here. I want you to get into your legs and your arms and your feet. And uh, if I was brave enough to do it, you can do it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's not it. It's just I'm giving you, I, I just want to encourage you. That's what I'm supposed to be doing as a minister for you. I'm saying, hey, you know, you can keep going. There's more to God. There's always more. It's glory to glory. There's always more. It's forever more. That was his design for life was let's just keep it going. I don't ever want to stop giving more. Glory to glory to glory to glory. So, yeah. So we're going to play that song. Mary, are we ready for that? Bob's got something.
wanted to tell y'all that, that there's some girls, some ladies, girls, ladies that pray. They're intercessors. And they meet once a week. Isn't that right? And y- y'all know them. A lot of them come here to this church. Most of them do. And they were praying this, this Thursday morning. And they felt like they got a word that we were supposed to sing this song. Cherry Russell's part of it. Donna, Shelby, Avery, Ann, and some others. There are a couple of others. I think uh, Pam um, uh, and Roger. Pam, not Roger, but Pam's on it. There's some others, too. Anyway, so this is in response to they got a word or felt like the Lord said, play this song. And so Ann called Josh and said, hey, I really think the Lord's telling us to play this song this morning. I don't know. I don't know why, (laughs) but I know years ago when we were at the St. James, we played this song, and it was crazy what happened. Now, whether we do that this morning, I don't know. But I remember standing in a chair and hollering my head off that the king is here. There have been words, I don't know if you were here Wednesday night down in uh, the harbor, and um, I think it was Kathy Oliver talked about her listening on TV to, a, to Chuck Pierce. He was at some conference, and she was trying to decide whether to move back to Selma or not. And she hear, she's living in Jacksonville, Florida, and she hears Chuck Pierce on a, at a conference in Arkansas. He's on TV. He says, the Lord is going to do something in Selma, Alabama, and it's going to be dramatic, and it's going to be revival. And, and she dropped. I mean, she, she was like, oh, my gosh. For years, we've heard words about Selma and Selma. And I, I was thinking as Josh is talking about the people of Israel with 400 years of, of no word from the Lord and all that. And I'm thinking, when? You know, we're keeping on hearing these words that Selma's going to be revival and it's going to tra- be transformed. And we're like, when, Lord? When? We've been listening. We've been seeing. I'm believing. Help my unbelief, but I'm believing. And. Josh is talking about worship this morning, and the the king is gonna. We're, we, the king yeah. is coming. Well, we're about to sing, "The King is Here." Come on, he's not coming. <laughs> he's here. Yeah. He is here. Where heaven and earth will join together. We've asked for our angels this morning. Mm. I mean, they're here. They respond. Yep, they're here. They're not going to miss so, an opportunity. And so, like, I want to I wanna share. I, I'm not telling anybody if they don't jump around and act <laughs> like a donkey jumping around or something that something's <laughs> wrong with you. There's no pressure for worship. That's not what this is about. But I know the first yeah. time I raised my hand was at Camp Lee, and I saw Dane across the, wor- uh, the, the room raise his hands. And I wanted to so bad, but I was afraid to. And I went to the back corner where nobody could see me, and I raised my hands, and I just started crying. It felt so good. And, Josh, you said this morning what was happening was my arms were worshiping God. My hands were worshiping God, (laughs) you know? And then I remember Alan Yarborough coming to uh, uh, Blue Jean when we were at First Pres, and and he making us all yell. Y'all remember the ones that were there? I was about to pass out. I was so nervous because there were a lot of people there that weren't cool with shouting and jumping around in church. And and Alan said, we cheer for Alabama and Auburn, well, we're about to cheer for Jesus. And he said, for one solid minute, we're going to yell for Jesus. And I'm thinking, I am dead. They're going to absolutely kill me. Don't do it. Don't do it. And he said, if you don't do it, I'm going to call you out. He jumped up in a chair and he's looking around. He says, one, two, three, you were there, Rick, because we've laughed about it. I yelled Jesus so loud, I almost blacked out for a minute. And we all did. And something broke off of me in that moment. Yeah. The fear and the religion and being held up broke off of me because my voice, my shout was worshiping God. That's what you're saying. Absolutely. It's an opportunity for your whole person to worship Jesus. And if you can't do it, that's cool. Worship Him in your heart. He knows. And he accepts you right where you are. But if you want to take a step towards more freedom, do it. Don't hold back. Josh, I love the example of being up there (laughs) and being a fool for God. That's what King David did. That's what King David did. 
Love he told God. Micah, who had no life in her, yeah. that I will be even more undignified. That's right. You have modeled the spirit of David for us this morning. Come on, so, with that said, we're about to sing this song, Do What You Do, Be What You Be. But I encourage you to let your whole being worship the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, because He is here. When we sing this, yeah. believe it, yeah. declare it. Yeah. These are the things that change atmosphere and change yeah. communities when yeah. we believe what we're singing. Amen. Really seven. Hey, just one last thing, and I really want to invite the people at home, uh, you know, like, Hey, you're by yourself. I mean, you got no excuse. <laughs> Get up off the couch and start to to, to really enjoy your uh, uh, this experience. And Bob did such a great job of in, uh, of introducing that video. So let's hold on to that. But everybody, stand up. Uh, let's just do a quick prophetic act because I don't want the devil to have any say in what's about to happen. If you're getting some noise or or whatever from the Lord from. Pfft, the devil, then let's cancel that right now. So a little prophetic act that I learned to do a long time ago, uh, King David, he was my inspiration. There's other, and Hezekiah, no, is it Hezekiah? I can't remember, but there's a few different uh, places in the Bible where they would they would uh, conquer some kings or their their world or whatever, and then they would stick their foot on the neck of that king, basically to tell him, hey, <laughs> you're completely conquered. Uh, so let's do that to the devil right now. Just Just take your right foot, and put it out. You're going to put it right on that devil's neck. And we're just going to declare, in Jesus' name, you don't have any say over my worship for God. Never again do you get to speak to me or try to say that, I'm, you know, that I should receive shame or that, I, that anything that I give to God um, is, is off limits. I'm going to give. I'm going to do everything that God wants me to do in my life, whether you like it or not. You're completely conquered in the name of Jesus. Amen. And you guys get excited about that. And let's start.